people that don't know, lots of people refer to you as a, a, a wizard, a pediatric yeah. wizard, Keenan, which I, I, I think you quite enjoy that. I do, uh, I do. <laughs> we, we had that written a few times on, on, on a review, I think, and it's kind of stuck. So, um, uh, so, so what do you do differently, do you feel, from a pediatric perspective than the average physio or the average pediatric physio? Because you're probably, uh, I'm not just saying this because you're on the podcast, but you're very popular with your clients. Uh, when you changed from Kalgoorlie to Albany, lots of clients wanted to stay on from a telehealth perspective. Um, so, you know, I, I get the impression you do things a little bit differently. So you know, how do you describe what you do versus the average physio from a pediatric perspective? Sure. Um, that's a very good question. I would say it's very different. My approach is completely different to a standardized pediatric assessment. Um, standardized pediatric assessment, you'd be looking for, you know, developmental milestones. Um, what I tend to do is try to figure out who this person is and what is their potential. I, I adopt a potential-based approach opposed to a problem-based approach. A problem-based approach, let's say they've got hip dysplasia, you only see the hip dysplasia. If you take a solutions-based approach or potentials-based approach, you see a lot more than just the hip dysplasia. Um, and I, I tend to take a solutions-based or a potential-based approach because it opens up so much more for my patient. I can do so much more with them. I can take them from a just a hip dysplasia patient to someone who's also now talking, someone who's also confident to speak, someone who can run and someone who can jump, someone who can interact with their friends, um, someone who can you know, pick a particular sport and become great at it. Um, and I, I think that's probably one of the big, big differences. I try not to just look at the diagnosis. I look at the person. So how does that differ in your assessment? So would you, you'd obviously take a bit more of a holistic sort of approach in regards to your assessment, as opposed to someone's got hip dysplasia, I assess their hips. Yeah. Are you generally just taking a far more functional approach and sort of looking at everything in your initial assessment or how do you sort of operate that? Absolutely. Yep. Functional movements would be absolutely key. So I've kind of gone away from milestones and gone to kind of functional movements. What can this person do? What can't they do? And what do I need to do to help them to do it? Um, and that often I find is a lot more beneficial. Um, but I also try to put that function in a context. So let's say they've got hip dysplasia. Are they in a wheelchair? Um, are they being carried by the mum or are they like hobbling along on the hip because it's so sore? Um, so I try to take that hip dysplasia with the functional movements into a context and I try to teach the family how to deal with it better. Um, so often when a patient walks in the room, I don't just have the hip dysplasia patient. I've also got the mum or the caregiver in the room as well. Yeah. So my treatments generally involve a high level of education to the caregiver to the yep. mom, but also equipping them with skills. If I'm not there, they can do it themselves. They can do it at home. Um, and I'm a firm believer of getting everyone involved, not just me. Yeah, um, interesting that, isn't it? You're sort of, you're not just treating the client, you're sort of treating the family. Like they're yeah. all a part of the equation. And, and, and you're right, like, um, you know, you're, you, you, don't, you don't really need them to get a result in the clinic with you you need them to get a result at home with their mom or the dad or whoever the caregiver is so uh, I guess including them as part of the rehab is super yeah. important and that's that's probably where I get the best results if you can equip the parent or the caregiver to do this at home the, the results are not just kind of weekly based the results are daily based and I really find that that goes a long way in reaching those goals, smashing those goals, getting a new set of goals. And my patients go from just a patient to a confident human being who's not scared of moving or not scared of dislocating the hip. Um, and I think that's that's really key because the, the parent is the one that has to do it every day. Yeah. And often I find the parent is just as scared as just as kind of, oh, what's going to happen to my daughter? You know, just as worried. Yeah. as the patient is um but often if the parents are on the same page as you and the patient everyone's on the same page all of a sudden the patient gets really good results because everyone's working at the same thing 